Before two Apollo missions went to the moon, the astronauts had to first come to Northern Ontario. As we saw in the last video, link in the description, they were parts of Sudbury that looked like the moon. But this was more of a coincidence than anything. These weren't sightseeing trips to get the astronauts used to a barren landscape. No, there was an important scientific purpose to bringing them here. And it all has to do with this city's connection to the stars above. Welcome back to Sudbury, Ontario. Ontario's astronaut superstar Chris Hadfield once referred to Sudbury as, quote, that big smear. He was referring to the way the city looks from above, and it's actually a pretty fitting description. About 1.85 billion years ago, a meteorite smashed into what's now Sudbury. It created the Sudbury Basin, the third largest known impact structure in the world. At the same time, it also made Sudbury one of the richest mineral areas on Earth. For a while, there was no hard evidence that a meteorite had caused this formation. It was so old that much of it had eroded. But there were a few key features that would ultimately prove the theory. And as strange as it may sound, that whole mystery began to unravel right here behind this very hotel. I'm David Pearson. I was a professor at Laurentian University until just a couple of years ago. And uh, for the first 30 years that I was at Laurentian, I taught geology. Back in May of 1963, a geologist called Bob Dietz came up from the United States and he looked at the geological map of Sudbury, the Sudbury area, and said, um, this is a meteorite impact crater. Around those craters, there were what are called shatter cones, that is cone-shaped fractures, a bit like sort of half of an ice cream cone with a point at one end. And they came from the shock wave that caused the crater, the shockwave of an asteroid, a meteorite hitting the Earth. He got a taxi at Sudbury Airport. He came to the Holiday Inn here, and um, in the headlights of the taxi, before he'd even got out of the car, he said, whoa, those are shatter cones. That was the first, the very first piece of evidence that Sudbury was the result of a meteorite impact and not a volcanic explosion, which was the current uh, interpretation at the time. After Sudbury became known as a confirmed impact crater, other geological features began to stand out. One of these was breccias, and that's what led NASA to take an interest in this place. What has happened on the moon is that surface rocks, and rocks probably down to 10 or 15 kilometers deep, have in fact been broken by the shock waves that um, rubbed, <laughs> caused sides of those fractures to rub together and for fragments that came from the sides to be rounded like boulders to make what we call Sudbury breccia. And, and that was one of the main reasons that they came to Sudbury so that they could see and, and say, this is breccia, this is like Sudbury breccia. In 1971, the future crew of Apollo 16 came to Sudbury with a small team from NASA. The following year, the Apollo 17 crew would do the exact same. The moon is well known for having a surface that's covered in all sorts of craters, so by first studying a known impact crater here on Earth, the astronauts might have a better idea of what to expect on the lunar surface. Inco geologists took the astronauts around the city. They visited some of the best examples of impact crater features in the area. It was quite a sight. The Apollo 16 crews used radios to talk with a sort of mission control. It was meant to help simulate the conditions they would face on the moon. A small team of people from Sudbury supported the training, and as it turns out, we already met one of the team members. I was with the Apollo 17 crew, uh, with Jack Schmidt and, and Gene Cernan, the last two astronauts to visit, uh, to visit the moon. Uh, and I was there uh, partly as as a local geologist to add a little bit of information here and there. The astronauts learned a lot on their field trips to Sudbury, and they didn't forget this place when they got into space. Charlie described this uh, boulder right here. It looks like a Sudbury breccia, and that's the truth. I can't believe it. Less than 10 years after the NASA training, Sudbury began its regreening program. 
There's dozens of photos of the astronauts on barren, rocky hilltops like the one that used to stand behind me before this area became a forest once again. Because of all those changes, it's become really hard to figure out where the photos were originally taken. Lucky for me though, I don't have to do that work. Remembering how exciting it was to be with the Apollo 17 astronauts when they came to Sudbury, I thought I must find all the photographs that exist that I can get my hands on about not only the Apollo 17, but the Apollo 16 crew who came here. And I found those photographs and I found a spot where I can be absolutely sure that uh, Charlie Duke and John Young stood and began to talk geology. So let's go and have a look. It is incredible to be able to revisit these same training sites more than 50 years later. Many of them are on private property, but there are a few, like here at Onaping High Falls, where anybody can retrace the footsteps of the astronauts. These training missions were really interesting on their own, but they also represent a bigger shift, the transformation of Sudbury into a place of great scientific research. It gave people thoughts about other parts of the landscape, the lakes, the history of the lakes, the impact of industry. It, it led to many, many threads of science research that probably would not have taken place if we'd just been an ordinary community with an ordinary history. We're not. We're an extraordinary community with an extraordinary history. We previously learned about Sudbury's regreening program, a world-class industry-led project to repair environmental damage. There's also been plenty of innovation here within the mining sector, and Sudbury is also home to a major physics research lab two kilometers underground. Sudbury is well known within the scientific community, but it's stories like the NASA training that have stayed with the people of this city. My name is Todd Thomas. I uh, live here on Kelly Lake, and uh, right now I'm sitting on the rock that the Apollo 16 astronauts sat when they were in Sudbury. Well, I've lived here for over 35 years, and it's special to me. I'm a fly boy. I love flying. I love anything that has to do with it. And having to be able to sit, and I'm sitting on the rock where the Apollo astronauts sat, I, I, it means a lot to me. And this rock will not be disturbed. Uh, we're going to keep it uh, for as long as I'm living uh, with no development on it because it's a piece of history. So we have a few old photos, stories of astronauts on the rocks, and a bunch of overgrown training sites. Why talk about all this now? After all, the last time a person set foot on the moon was more than half a century ago. Well, Sudbury's role in training astronauts might not be over. Dr. Gordon Osinski, I'm a professor in the Department of Earth Sciences here at the University of Western Ontario. For a decade now, I've been teaching uh, an impact cratering field school there every other year in September. And um, that has had support uh, through NASA survey. And they would fund a bunch, you know, sometimes up to 15 US students, grad students, postdocs to come up to Sudbury and gain experience for the very same reasons, you know, I just outlined. It's a big crater, learn about cratering processes, go out into the field and see these rocks. When we go to the moon, a big priority, for example, is the South Pole Aitken Basin, figuring out if there was a late heavy bombardment on the moon, age dating in the early part of the solar system. And for that, we need to date impacts. And for that, we need impact melt. And for that, we need astronauts to know how to recognize it. So therefore, um, you know, Sudbury makes a really ideal candidate. I'm pushing NASA and the CSA that we should start bringing astronauts back to Sudbury. Um, but it hasn't happened quite yet. The Apollo missions would not have been as successful if it weren't for the training here in Sudbury. And they're a part of why this city is known for scientific excellence to this day. The coming decades are going to bring major growth for space exploration, and Northern Ontario is already a part of that new era. It might be too early to say what Sudbury's role will be this time around, but whether it's out in space or a little closer to home, this city certainly has a lot more to teach us. For that, it's earned its place in the universe's living history.